There are millions of near misses and more than 6,000 deaths estimated on level crossings around the world every year. But because the numbers are relatively low compared to accidents on the roads, not enough priority is given by policymakers to improving safety. The International Union of Railways, road sector organisations, European institutions and the United Nations are committed to raising awareness about the risks improving technology and changing behaviour. The human consequences of an accident are immense. On December 3, 2005, Tina Hughes lost her 14-year-old daughter Olivia in an accident at this level crossing in eastern England. Olivia and her friend Charlie waited for their train to pull into the station on the opposite side of the platform. They opened the pedestrian gates to cross over. But they did not see a second train coming at high speed around the corner from the opposite direction. Clearly, they didn't realise that there was a second train coming. There was no, there was no second train coming warning as there was supposed to be. And, and sadly, the girls stepped through um, into the path of that Stansted Express train. They didn't stand a chance. Today, the crossing has been upgraded, transforming it from one of the most dangerous in the country to one of the safest. Accidents at level crossings are costly, not only in terms of human lives and injuries, but also due to material damage, environmental damage, and the costs of delays and stoppages. The first economic cost we would think of is the loss of life and the costs of injuries. Uh, but uh, when there is an accident, a crash between a road user and the railways, then there is a huge economic cost to the railways itself. And because of the delays, not only to the railways, but also to the manufacturing industry. When the railways is uh, transporting for just-in-time services, then, uh, for example, an automotive uh, manufacturing plant is suffering. Um, in addition to that, uh, usually for the railways there is a huge asset damage. The social impacts of crashes at level crossings can be devastating. Unfortunately, it's not uncommon for school buses carrying children to be hit by trains at level crossings. The deaths and injuries of youngsters from the same school may burden communities with pain, suffering and trauma for decades. Accidents are often perceived as the responsibility of the railways, but a great majority are due to errors, deliberate or not, from motorists and pedestrians. Bringing road and rail experts together to improve safety at level crossings, like at this meeting, convened by the Inland Transport Committee of the United Nations Economic Commission for Europe in Geneva, is seen as critical. What I'm pledging for is actually, as a rail advocate, to really uh, invite the uh, road users and the road institutions to work with us to try to enforce a number of measures that can reduce the consequences of the problem. On this stretch of track in Zurich, road and rail authorities are working together successfully. There are 40 level crossings along the 13 kilometres of light railway. In 2013, there were 12 accidents, one fatal. We are trying to work eng with the other Verkehrsträgern zusammenzuarbeiten. Das heißt, mit, der, äh, mit dem Baumbetreiber und der Kantonspolizei versuchen wir nach sicheren Lösungen zu suchen. Zum Beispiel hier bei dieser Kreuzung hat man probiert, mit einer grünen Einfärbung eine Sofortmaßnahme zu verwirklichen. Jetzt sind wir daran zu suchen, wie wir die Anlage noch sicherer machen können in Zukunft, also mit, mit größeren baulichen Maßnahmen. To improve visibility, they've painted the front of the trams white, added warning signs and are discussing whether to add barriers at certain level crossings to further reduce the risk of accidents. 
Ein Restrisiko kann nie ausgeschlossen werden. Es gibt Situationen, die man sich nicht einmal im Voraus vorstellen kann. Aber wir wollen in den nächsten Jahren das Unfallrisiko um 50 Prozent senken. The safest level crossing is the one that doesn't exist. But replacing them with bridges and underpasses can be costly. Adding half barriers or full barriers, flashing lights and warning bells are tried and tested safety measures. But too often road users don't abide by traffic rules and warnings. This is why new technology may offer innovative, sometimes low-cost solutions, which can offer an additional margin of safety. Network Rail in the UK is testing the Norwegian-developed Wavetrain system. Tiny microphones are fitted onto the rails. They pick up the sound waves generated when a train travels on the tracks. These detectors then trigger light and sound warnings at nearby level crossings. In Australia, they're testing a wireless communication system, which allows train and road vehicles to talk to each other. The driver is alerted when a train is approaching, and if he doesn't slow down, he receives increasingly urgent audio and visual warnings. Warning. Stop for train. Warning. Stop for train. The system is also under research and development elsewhere. A great majority of accidents at level crossings are due to inadvertent errors or violations. Israeli traffic psychologist Michael Kale has developed a set of visual illusions which subconsciously influence the way drivers behave. In research we did on simulators, we saw that, for instance, taking lines that become more and more narrow as they approach the level crossing, make people believe they're driving too fast and they slow down. Painting on the road, making it look like a bottleneck, make people drive more in the center of the road and do that slower. Tests on the simulator show that drivers slow down by 25% approaching a level crossing, and the Israeli authorities are trying out his recommendations. With my little light, something beginning with T. Is it a tyre? No. Is it Teddy? No. It has to be a tree. We've had that. Do you give up? Yes, I do. Wait. Is it track? Distractions can cost you your life. See track, think train. Educating the public is one of the most effective ways of improving safety. Since 2009, the International Union of Railways has spearheaded International Level Crossing Awareness Day. In Poland and Slovakia, the authorities run mock exercises, highlighting the devastating consequences of collisions. Around the year, Operation Lifesaver, based in Estonia, Canada and the US, run TV campaigns. Siin toodatakse jõuluks koju. Volunteers go into schools to encourage children to respect the rules and stay safe. It's more difficult to change the behaviour of adults, especially those who drive for a living. In Belgium, most accidents happen at the port of Antwerp, where there are some 1,100 kilometres of train tracks and some 200 level crossings. Professional drivers cross the tracks every few minutes, and some take risks so they can make deliveries on time. Eigenlijk af en toe wel, maar af en toe staan die lichten aan in Antwerpen en dan sta je te wachten, te wachten, te wachten, en dan komt er een trein aan en dan heb je toch zoiets van, oh, ik rijd toch maar even over. Maar als er als er een overvraag komt en je ziet Echt in de verste verte geen een trein afkomen, dan houdt men niet altijd aan de regels houden. Infrabel, which is responsible for the Belgian railway network, is raising awareness about driving safely through the port. It's a two-way process. They gave us many useful tips. They also uh, said which level crossings were the most dangerous according to them. 
Um, for instance, when the when the sun sun is low, they they won't they won't be able to see the light. New lights will be installed over the next two years, and the road, rail, and port authorities are looking at other safety measures to reduce speed. If education fails, legal enforcement is the next step. In the UK, 15 state-of-the-art mobile vans with multiple cameras do spot checks for violations by pedestrians and drivers at level crossings. As you can see here, the lights are on amber and they're now to red and this motorcycle is about to stop. You, just when you think nothing's about to happen, watch this. He doesn't want to wait and he's gone straight through as the barriers are going down. That's misuse of the level crossing. The video footage is used as evidence in prosecutions. But 90% of the offenders caught jumping the lights are offered a half-day driver retraining scheme rather than a fine and penalty points on their driving permits. So welcome to the British Transport Police course today here at Ealing. Um, are you all pleased to be here? <laughs> the aim is re-education, not punishment, and participants learn about the consequences of their actions and how to drive safely. So what are you going to do on the approach to a crossing next time? But just be that little bit more aware, really. Out of hundreds taking these courses, there have been very few re-offenders. Studies have told us that people who have attended a, a diversionary scheme are far less likely to re-offend. If you take points and a fine, you're more likely to re-offend than people who, who, who have some education, so that's why they've been rolled out. Um, I'm here because my daughter, um, Olivia, the little blonde one... Committed to ensuring her daughter, Olivia, did not die in vain, Tina Hughes has become a safety activist. She was going off to Cambridge with her friend Charlie. She regularly talks to Network Rail staff about the consequences of failing to manage risk. If my daughter had been hit by a car, I probably would have been able to go to the mortuary. I would have been able to go and hold her hand, give her a kiss and say goodbye. But I can tell you I'd never had that opportunity because when a child or any human being is hit by a 70 mile an hour train there is not a lot left and if any of you are operational and have been in a hot, that horrific situation then you'll understand that that is just awful. As a parent it's a heartrending story and uh, I'm just glad that I work in a part of the company which can in effect close crossings and look at other options to improve the safety. I found today incredibly inspiring. Uh, it gave it human context. Uh, when you think about level crossings, you think very much around the, you know, the, the, the physical element and you think about the statistics around it, but the very fact that it's about you know, uh, the impact that it can have if we don't get it right, um, it was really moving. Um, I'm a little bit uh, lost for words, really.